Let's get on with it. Looking ahead. Now there's a bloody devil trailing after us. Well, this gets better and better. Shop around, he said. He seems sure we won't find anything. And he might be right. We've had no luck so far. If we don't know what we're walking into, that bridge will collapse under us. The devil has a plan. He's playing with us. He reminds me of, well, someone I used to know. Someone I like to play with people. You're a warlock. You understand how dangerous the wrong deal can be. Because you've got it all figured out, I'm sure. You know who tampered with the parasite and why, and what they have planned for us. And of course, you know why we're interesting enough that a devil, pardon, a cambion, would proposition us. Because if you don't know that, you may as well sign over your soul now. We may escape whatever web we're trapped in, but until we know what's going on, this Raphael has us exactly where he wants us. Yes. Oh, darling, I'm hurt. I thought we had something special. I guess I'll spend my evenings lounging here while well, you do all the hard work. It sounds awful. Devil Raphael flaunts his paltry wings as if he wants to impress us. You saw the red dragon slaying his infernal kin above hell's fires, did you not? Next to a dragon, the devil's a gnat. When I am Kithrak, I will take my queen Vlakith his head as a trophy. I will sit astride one. It is only a matter of time. I will ride a red dragon. I will wield the silver sword. And I will conquer every layer of hell, should my queen command it. The Geich are my kind's mortal enemy. It is not unusual for the Kithrak to give chase. To penetrate the hells, this is unusual. But I'm not one to question the wisdom of my queen. I can see but to the horizon. Vlakith's sight pierces the many planes. Chuk. Be wary of false promises. The missing druid, Halsin, was it? He may be talented, but only a Githyanki Zathis can cleanse an embedded tadpole. It is done. Speak. Entirely. 
I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each crash contains a Saithisk purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more, infinities upon infinities. I expect I am your first. And they didn't cut you from navel to neck. Well, perhaps they were otherwise occupied. I am still getting used to people like you. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. That large, fleshy nose of yours looks like a mistake. Better is an opinion, but mine is certainly more economical, disciplined, dignified. I understand much beyond your comprehension. More to the point, I know the cure for our condition. It is imperative we locate a crash. You do well to observe more and question less. Yes, in great detail. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have ceased to exist and a mind flayer is born. That shiver betrays your fear. Suppress it. It is useless. We must find my kind and be rid of the parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me. Yes, if you give it no further thought. But anomalies lead to surprises. Bad surprises. Besides, what hasn't happened may yet come to pass. Well, that wouldn't give us some respite. Will's brows furrow as your minds connect. He sees the burning embers of Joaquin's rest, then Floric's face as she tells you of Raven Guard's abduction. Hells! Old Raven Guard's been taken. <laughs> I know him better than most. He's my father. I know I haven't said. Our relation was no matter of pride. Not least for him. I know. And you're right. When I look into a mirror, 
I see two faces. I see the Blade of Frontiers, a man hunting the fiends who prey on the weak and claw at the coast. And I see Will Ravenguard, a memory of a memory, a man who belongs to the past. I wanted you to know the Blade, not the shadow he left behind. I've been asking myself the same question. What makes a Duke of Baldur's Gate so interesting to the drow? Even the houses of Men's Oberanzen would have little use for my father. No, this is no drow plot. These absolute nutters, these true souls are behind his abduction. His absence alone will sow chaos in the city. If they were to infect him, he could lead Baldur's Gate to ruin. All the more reason to find him. The Absolute has seized not just my father, but the future of the Sword Coast. I'm all for it. Not so enchanting as you'd think. The poor tears, the cold wells. They were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets. Father's the son of a blacksmith, born with barely a coin in the coffers. He made a name for himself among the flaming fist, brave as Balderan, stubborn as a deep rofe, daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. <laughs> I spent more time dueling with father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and the talent for courtly dance. Yes and no. Father taught me the four pillars of power. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. He reckoned I'd follow in his footsteps. First as a fist marshal, then as a duke. Vanquish evil, maintain order, save the world. But a duke makes bedfellows with more monsters than he slays. Father called it diplomacy. I called it hypocrisy. In the frontiers, there is no posturing, no diplomacy. I slay monsters. I don't consort with them. Well, not when I can avoid it. brings to mind a story. The Devil with the Silver Tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales, don't you think? Do not trust Raphael. Is that plain enough? Refuse him, no matter how tempting the offer, no matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you, the cost will be too great. That's because you still have hope. But when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you only what you're least ready to part with and then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure, but the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it, and she was planning to return. 
one of the Archdevil's Ariel's own. Chaos incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach, even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking, the damage she might be doing. A powerful friend with a keen interest in privacy. I'm sworn to say no more. You are a warlock. You know about bound souls and frozen tongues. I can only leave the rest to your imagination. Suffice to say, I hunt monsters, devils included, and I will do what I can to quench the coast of their flames. My father once said, one does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. After my exile, I was hunting near the Cloakwood. I heard a child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. I left him with his uncles. Five years on and he's flourishing. If only every child was so lucky. I mourn the ones I could never save, whose cries I never heard. In the boy's tears, I finally saw the suffering wrought by the villains of the wild. The frontiers demanded a blade, and so I heeded. It was an even bloodier day and a stronger foe. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah, but that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. Tiny groove spider across the ice surface. It resembles a sending stone used to confer with distant contacts. A sending stone? <laughs> Nothing so special, I assure you. You watch and listen for signs of deceit, but sense nothing unusual. Do you feel as flattered as I do? Fighter to dine with a devil. <laughs> Don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us, badly. And in that knowledge lies our opportunity. Our souls. I suspect that's but his opening offer. Let me play the devil's advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. If there's one quality all the denizens of the hells embody, it's ambition. A quality they share with many humans, come to think of it. Pfft. 
I'm at the foggiest. But, based on the evidence before us, we can make certain deductions as to why he sought out our merry band. Fact one, there's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. Devils aren't known to aid mortals out of simple kindness. Whatever Raphael wants, we must be the key to getting it, along with our tadpoles. So, we say for now, we wait. If I'm right, Raphael will seek us out again, and when he does, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormerian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. I'll have to speak slowly. I'm finding it quite difficult to concentrate with my condition gnawing at my insides like a teething displacer kitten. That is most gratifying to hear. May I? It's like a lullaby that sings to sleep the demon inside. A metaphorical demon, I haste to point out, but no less dangerous. And no less bound to wake up again to continue its ravages. Such is the nature of all monsters. My words, my actions, my award-winning smile. Sincerely, though, I understand I ask a lot from you with few answers in return. But in time, all will be told. I myself am a much more powerful artifact in your arsenal. Rest assured of that. So, Gale just consumes magical items like I do wine. We truly are a group apart. Nevertheless, as quirks go, that's a new one for me. Fine. What's on your mind? I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them.
Don't sleep well, flitting between dreams and nightmares. Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong. Or maybe you just get lucky. Shit. No, no, it's not what it looks like. I swear. I... I wasn't going to hurt you. I... I just needed... Well, blood. There, in the dim firelight, you see him for what he really is. A vampire, a slave to sanguine hunger. I've never killed anyone. Well, not for food. I feed on animals. Bulls, deer, kobolds, whatever I can get. But it's not enough. Not if I have to fight. I feel so... weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. A strange sensation courses through you. And your companion's mind unfolds. Secrets half revealed. Happening. Something stirs deep within you, hungry and alert. It's taking something you'll never get back. His mind opens up, revealing cracked and quivering memories. At their heart, you see dark eyes commanding you to feed. You open your mouth and bite down, not into a tender neck, but into the twisting body of a rat. The only thing your master lets you eat. I... Yes. Yes, I ate whatever disgusting vermin my master picked. So you can see why I'm slow to trust you. But I do trust you. And you can trust me. Because we don't have a choice. Not if we're going to save ourselves from these... worms. I need you alive. You need me strong. Please. Only be a taste, I swear. I'll be well, you'll be fine. And everything can go back to normal. Mm. 
Ah, of course. I shall be gentle as a babe. Let's make ourselves comfortable, shall we? It's like a shard of ice into your neck. A quick, sharp pain that fades to throbbing numbness. Your breath catches, your pulse quickens. is finally clear. I feel strong. I feel happy. <sighs> ah, don't be so dramatic. This is just a little transaction between friends. And look what you've gained. Together, we can take on the world. It won't happen again. You have my word. Now, if you'll excuse me, you're invigorating, but I need something more filling. This is a gift, you know. I won't forget it. You watch as he stalks towards the forest, stronger, more confident, ready to hunt. you feel? It'll pass. Just be glad I'm not a true vampire. A bite from them and you might wake up as a vampire spawn, like my good self. All of a vampire's hunger but few of their powers. Oh no, I should be cinders in this light. I hadn't seen the sun for 200 years before we crashed here. Someone, or something, wants me alive. They've changed the rules. Standing in the sun, wading through a river, wandering into homes without an invitation. They're all perfectly mundane activities now. As for my other quirks, well, <laughs> we can figure those out in time. That's my theory, but who knows? I'm just glad you're being sensible about these uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. A vampire among us? So be it. But should I wake with so much as a drop of blood on my neck, I will end him. Oh. And a quick word of warning, Astarian. I taste absolutely awful. Keep your distance.
He's not wrong. We're bound together, no matter what comes. You say all the right words, but I'm not so sure you mean the right things. Still, I will respect the decision that was made. There now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. If I choose to kill you, you will not even see it.
can't afford to fail. Need to press onward. A wizard, not a cat burglar. With haste. Let's get on with it. Still alive, so that's progress.
This must be where the gnolls attacked. The beast reeks of brimstone and offal. <clears throat> Every breath is thick with blood. You hear what comes next before you see it. The sharp snapping of bones and a yelp of pain as her body starts to twist and undulate. You watch with cold realization. This isn't the end of one life. At the start of another, gnolls can spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. against her skull. She yelps, then goes still. As the life fades from her eyes, the gnoll within her dies too, stillborn.
Heading there. Movies. All's well that ends. Not as bad as it could have. To my death. Battle has taken its toll. I should rest. I know they do not. It is my responsibility to cleanse myself. They pursued the Nautiloid. Perhaps they were trying to free you. A vain notion. I am one of many and will not be a burden to my queen. Never wanted the easy part. I'll take that.
is the devil Will has been tasked to kill. Fuck me! It's you, from the ship. Haven't taken any bounties from a burnt tear dink, have you? Nice of you to ask. Lately, I've gotten used to being called devil. No follow-up questions. The truth is, well, it's a long story, and I'll tell it, but... A great heat roars through you, her heat, fiery as the hells. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies, as you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. A blood war. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. Mountains as far as the eye can see. Guess that explains the voices. From that peak I got into your head, you've made some inroads trying to get the thing sorted. But alas, no joy. I'm Karlak. And you are... Really now? First I catch a ride out of Avernus, then I stumble into a friend. Who's the goddess of luck again? I owe her a flower. Now that we're old pals, how would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? A little background, if your moral compass needs something to point at. You already know I fought in the Blood War. I was good at killing demons. Really good. So good, Zariel, the archdevil herself, made me her personal attack dog. I played along until I could get the fuck out of there. It took me ten years to properly escape, but now I'm free. Zariel sent goon after goon to hunt me down, but believe me when I tell you, I'm not going. The latest yappy little dog she sicked on me are nearby. A group of dopes posing as paladins of tear. Want to help me take them down? Don't worry, I'll lead the charge. But I could use your help. There's a lot of them, and only one of me. After that, we can team up. Take Faerun by the short hairs. Sound good? A warrior who winks at her foes while she slays them. You'd be a fool to refuse her. Dirty work's the only kind I like. Gets even messier the more bodies you throw at it. Think of the potential. Fuck yes. They cornered me outside the toll house just up the hill. Doubt they've gone far after the scorching I gave them. Hang on though. Looks like you've got enough backup at your side. Not sure there's room for me. I'll catch up with you when it's time to camp for now. But don't get to any of the fun stuff without me. Got it?
Lizelle, how would you punish someone who wronged you? Wrong me how? Oh, say, murder or theft? Killing is good. It calls the weak. A thousand times over. Hmm, good to know. Whatever killed those gnolls might be nearby. Careful. Direct me. What's next? Your sour face is tiring, Shadowheart. By all means, leave if I am so distasteful. I'd rather not turn my back on you, if it's all the same. Do I dare? One horn, the stink of Avernus, Advocatus Diaboli. We'll all be gods damned. The Blade of Frontiers. Thought I'd shaken you for good. That'll teach me to underestimate you. Karlak, the Archdevil Zeriel's gladiator. Come to burn the Sword Coast to ash. If by met, you mean hoofing it through the hells with this fucker on my tail? Shut it, devil. I know your kind. A heart darker than a shadow's nightmares. You'd cut a child's throat just to taste the blood. A devil? I didn't take the blade for a fool. I... A great fire roars through you. The fire of the first hell. You are Karnak, tearing through demons across a blood-red landscape of fire and volcanic cinder. The front lines of the Blood War. With every swing of her axe, Karlak fulfills Mistress Zariel's purpose. Proof! Clear as summer sky! It's over, Karlak! It's time you feel the sting of the blade! I've tried to tell you! I'm not what you think I am! Another vision. Karlak's blade rays slicing through devils, Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking escape. Will shudders with Karlak's desperation. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. By Baldurin's helm, I... No, I will not be tricked. You saw the truth. I may be an effective soldier, but I never wanted to serve Zariel. Legged it away from her the first chance I got. And yet you served.
Will catches his breath and his lips straighten. Sheer dread twists his face. No! Devils cannot be trusted! Do you listen to sense? This doesn't have to end badly for either of us. You know monsters better than anyone. Can't you look in my eyes and see I'm not a devil? You don't know what this means. You don't know what you're asking me to do. I'm asking you to live, Will. I don't want to hurt you. And to be frank, I'd rather not find out how the blade got his name. I swear to you, on all I am, I am not what you think. Shit! Shit. You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Oh, thank the gods. Thought I was gonna have to take your head. <laughs> you would have died in the attempt. But there have been enough threats today. Truce then, eh? Aye. Truce. I see the good in you, Karlak. I promise not to lose sight of it. Even when the hells burn hottest. Glad Will saw sense. Even more glad he decided to stick around. Takes a pretty slick mover to track down old Karlak. Fair, but still, the man's got a reputation for being lethal with that blade. I'm glad it's on our side. Moving in. You've been witness to a pantomime, I'm sorry to say. And I've played my part all too poorly. I can say only this. Karlak's not the only one who's had a villain's knife held to their throats. One night soon when we make camp, the veil will be lifted and I'll pay my penance. And you'll have them, but I can't promise you'll like them. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. 